What's going on guys, Ed here, bringing you another Marvel Midnight Suns video. And this one is not so much a discussion as it is me just giving you some information. Um, there's been a fair bit of requests for my decks over the time, or like over the time of the game, and whether that's on stream or Discord or comments or whatever. So I figured I would just piece together this uh, quick little video and run through the decks that I run and give you some options if you want to use these as a blueprint or maybe just give you some direction or maybe some insight as to how I play. And obviously these are not the only way to play the characters except for one uh, character, which we'll get to. And um, they're just to give you some ideas. These decks are also not um, in any way mod. What's the word? The, you don't require any mods to run these decks. Now, what I mean by that is obviously mods make the decks stronger and you should adapt them slightly depending on what you get. but I'm not really going to go into the mods I use because, as you guys probably know by now, uh, I don't really care for re-rolling mods and searching for that perfect build. And honestly, even if I was to look for that perfect build, the cards themselves would really not change that much, uh, for me at least. And so I'll try to reference where those are. Like, for example, just to, to use an example, if you were to roll counter on your best defense cards with um, Captain America, you could probably consider cutting dig in, right? And so I'll address those niche moments as and if and when they come up. But again, these are the decks I run at all stages of the game. I honestly wouldn't change much of anything other than the flex cards, which we'll talk about. So uh, don't take this as like a story mode, new game plus only or an end game only thing. This is just, these are good no matter what. They're good everywhere. And these are the decks I run. So uh, let's kick it off with our tried and true Hunter. So Hunter <clears throat> has the, the deck I run uses fully charged as our passive and balance collar or obsidian collar, depending on your preference and what you run. Um, you know, if you're flexing in things like Annihilation or maybe um, like All Out, right? Another dark card, you might want to go into the more that, that obsidian collar direction. Um, whereas I don't. I typically will run Balanced Collar, but yeah, Balanced or Obsidian, always fully charged for sure. And then we have Quick Slash, Slash, Last Sight, Wild Strike, Heal, Wrath, Whip, and Bladestorm. Now, this deck is basically structured for um, all mission types, uh, all situations where the hunter may need to sort of carry on their own or support the team or or you know, elongated story missions, or short, easy side missions, or the final mission, you name it, this build does it. Um, now, to kind of run through each card, Quick Slash is just incredible. It's you know a knockback quick with a high base coefficient. Really not much to say there. Slash is a preference of mine. I, I like having knockbacks. I think knockbacks are really, really, really strong. I think they're better most often, or more often than not, they're better than just high base damage. Um, so I like having it in the deck, but you can definitely take away um, Quick Slash or Slash if you get something a bit better. Or for example, if you roll uh, Quick on a sec on a Wild Strike, you may want to run a second Wild Strike. Um, things like that, right? Um, last Sight Wild Strike, they are staples. I would never not run them. I will always run at least one copy of them. Again, depending on what mod you pull, you may want to run two Wild Strike or two Last Sight. Um, hence why both Slashes have the Flex for the Attack category. Um, and then heals, definitely a flex option. I run this just because, yeah, I mean, you guys know, I kind of just run with whatever composition um, people want me to, and I just, whatever I want. But realistically, you could probably build your team comp in a way that you don't need heal. Um, and so if you're doing that, and if you get to that stage, yeah, definitely, you can get rid of heal. Um, I would flex it for maybe something like call to arms or... Um, even a second wrath if you really felt so inclined but I, I would probably just go with like a call to arms uh, pretty nice free alternative wrath super awesome it's you know it's weird right it's not a flex card even though like more damage doesn't necessarily mean like why is it so staple well it's staple because of the fact that it's free more than anything so you're always cycling through your hand and unlike call to arms which is just heroism Wrath is full on damage, and eventually you can get to a point where the Wrath buff is just always on you. So that's super awesome to have. Um, whip is a card that I think too many people have been sleeping on. More people are kind of converting to the way of the Whip <laughs> uh, as per 
my suggestion. Um, the discard is not a debuff, or it's not a negative, it's a good thing, it's a buff, it's, it's fantastic with how the deck mechanics work in this game. Um, very high base damage, forceful knockback, just like Slash, and but it's any direction, point and click, right? Um, running Whip also allows your Hunter to pretty much cost no heroism, so the heroism can instead be used by the rest of your team, uh, which is just a nice benefit there. In general, the Hunter's heroics don't really do as much as you wish they would. Like Patience does a lot of damage, yes, but th to make Patience works requires running a bunch of other cards that you're only running for patience basically so anyway i think whip is really good uh, you can definitely you can replace it with like a bands of fire only if uh you get excuse me forceful knockback mod on your bands of fire but even then uh, whip is the better card and then last up bladestorm Th this one's interchangeable with annihilation i prefer bladestorm because like i said uh knockbacks are better for me they more often than not equate to more damage, they're more tactical in design rather than just point, click, and go of Annihilation. So Bladestorm, not only do I enjoy it more, I think it has more utility and more, well, it does have more utility, more use, more synergies, more more stuff, right, associated with it. Whereas Annihil Annihilation, pound for pound, yes, it does do more damage um, pretty much once you get to about that. I think the math was when you get to about six or seven heroism it ends up doing more than bladestorm but for each their own you can try both i like both i'm not going to say one is necessarily better than the other i just like bladestorm more and it has more utility so that's my hunter deck i honestly don't really ever change anything the only thing i change is like i said the attack cards um but my skills and heroics one heal one wrath one whip one blade these never really change um, but the slashes sometimes come out if i do get really nice last sight or wild strikes because last sight and wild strike are so good that if you were to get good mods it is worth running multiple so that's my hunter um yeah try it see what you think and it's not really tailored to light or dark i don't really care about that kind of thing um anymore so that's what i run next up is blade so blade is a character who um, can actually be played a couple different ways. Um, in general, I play him more as a... If there's Revenants in the mission, he controls the Revenants. Or um, just a way of generating, like, marked, basically. <laughs> um, so this deck is pretty pretty standard, pretty staple. Um, regardless of how you're playing Blade, this is pretty well a standardized deck, but with a few sort of modifications you can make. So um, we have two copies of Quick Strike, one Reaper, and then one Make and Bleed, one Hunger, two Daywalker, and a Glaive. So you'll see down here at the bottom here, the only flexes are Daywalker and Glaive, but let's go from the top. So Double Quicks, the reason why you'd want to run Double Quick Strike is because uh, his other attack cards aside from Reaper and Quick Strike are quite bad. Um, that being Strike and relentless they just don't scale very well pretty much outside of early game like an early relentless is nice but not great and then daywalker is just a one pound for pound better strike and yes it does cost you three heroism but it gives you an extra chain it does more damage it really does add up and the mods you get on daywalker will really make it impactful regardless of what you get um strike just doesn't really hold up Reaper is essential to the character's design. You can run one copy, you could run two copies. I'll leave that entirely in your hands. Personally, I prefer only one, hence why there's one. Uh, make and bleed, same thing. Pretty integral to the entire kit's design. Uh, same thing here, you could run two. I prefer one, so this is just what I do. Hunger, I, you know, I actually, honestly, I don't love hunger. Uh, I just as a card, I don't like having it, but I do recognize that applying the marked is useful and also being free. It allows you to just cycle your hand and, and your deck faster in general, so it's nice to have, but it I'm just personally not a fan of it, but I do recognize its value. Um, two copies of Daywalker, you can definitely cut this down to one, hence why one of them is flex, but um, having Daywalker as your make and bleed um, application is so, so good, because in a perfect world you don't want to use Quick Strike to apply bleed, that just doesn't really make sense. Um, you can do it with Reaper, and Reaper will consume uh, the apply bit. Sorry, the bleed stacks that you've applied because 
it happens before the cons the consume so reaper can definitely apply the bleed with make them bleed but daywalker is your your best case scenario for applying the bleed and then last up is glaive glaive is a card you actually really don't have to run um and i've actually even told people that they maybe not to but let me tell you why i run it it's very simple it's because if you get it if you get it in a situation where like okay yeah daywalker is chain four but if you're using glaive as a apply bleed card don't run it i run glaive as an aoe damage card so what i mean by that is yeah daywalker can go one two three four or one two three four so you're hitting two targets two times but so just for reference these screenshots were taken from the same play so if we look at that two hits of daywalker is only 104 damage whereas one hit of Glaive is 208. So Glaive is doing as much damage in an AoE as all four hits of Daywalker. So for me, because Blade just doesn't have that AoE, he doesn't have that big bursty damage outside of Reaper, I choose to run one copy of Glaive, plus it has Exhaust, which is an added bonus, because um, then it permanently thins the deck, right? So you don't have to run Glaive. I think if I was going to not run Glaive, I would run a second Reaper. Um, if I was just to make one change on this, that's what I would do. I'd cut Glaive, run a second Reaper, and now you have four attack cards, two skills, two heroics. And then if you were still not really sold on that idea, you could cut Glaive for a second make and bleed, and I think that's totally acceptable. <clears throat> acceptable. Um, your call. I just prefer the AoE damage that Glaive provides for Blade as it's an aspect of his kit that he... Or it's an aspect of the game he just doesn't really have. Um, so, yeah. Glaive is up in the air. One copy of the two Daywalkers is up in the air, but I highly recommend this build with Glaive as your flex card. Captain America. So you can actually take Cap a few different ways, and, and I'll explain what those are. So we have Brooklyn Handshake, Quick Punch, two copies Dig In, two TBD, two Shield Bounce, and that's the deck. So the further you go in the game and the more... The more damage output you have and the more synergies and the more combos that you have the less and less and less that you need to worry about like taunt management and the more it's just like oh for example say you're running uh hunter cap and cap right the marvel and and america eventually you're going to load into the mission and get to a point where it's like okay i don't want those three units targeting carol so let's just kill those three units right and so it, it kind of gets to a point where you don't need to taunt manage so much as you just need to enemy manage However, I do prefer to, like, if you're bringing Captain America in the first place, you're probably anticipating a longer mission, or it's a super villain, or, um, you know, things like that. Something, something where it's going to be a bit more of an extended fight. There's summoning circle, right? Those missions can sometimes take time. So if you're bringing Captain America, you probably assume you're going to need more defense, right? And so this deck is built with that in mind. Now, if you're just a Captain America fan and you enjoy his design and you like his kit and you're going more of an aggressive route, yeah, you could probably cut Dig In, um, to be honest with you. And then just run Best Defense and Shield Bounce as your sort of defensive and taunt synergy. And if you do that, you could cut one of the Dig Ins and bring in Shield Charge. Some people like to, like Shield Charge. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Like, if you're if you're running Cap in general, you're probably assuming that you want the defensive properties of the character, because there are way better characters for dealing damage. But if you're a Captain America fan and you're taking him just because you love him and you want to do more damage, this may not quite be the build for you. Um, but this build is very universal. You're not going to feel bad about running this build. I just think you might be able to win one turn sooner if you were to take more defense. Or Sorry, more offensive options. So let's just quickly run through these cards. Um, Brooklyn Handshake. I actually know that a lot of people don't favor this card. Um, the reason I do is because I like having a knockback on most char characters and specifically like tanks. They often lack utility. And so this just gives him a utility option outside of shield belts. Excuse me. Um, one copy, quick punch. You could run two for sure. I think that would be... Totally fine. I just prefer one. And so the two dig ins. Dig in is just a great card. It it's way better than tactician in general. It gives you counter. 
Um, best defense, great card. It sort of enables Cap to keep cycling his block bar. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you roll counter as your mod, you can look to get rid of Diggin. But if you don't roll counter on best defense, um, I would suggest at least running one copy of Diggin just to give you that counter proc, right? Because without the counter, best defense is, is like it's good, but the whole point of best defense is dig in best defense synergies, which is why you want to have both until you, yeah, you get my point. And then shield bounce at two copies. Some people like this at one and they would rather cap just not use any heroism. However, I argue that point. I actually really like shield bounce. I think it's great damage in an AOE. It's like gather. Um, but instead it's gather that applies weak and taunt. So I think shield bounce is an incredible card um, I used to also run it at one. I so I, I understand that point of view uh, But eventually I got to a point where once you get a second best defense uh, In the deck you just always want to have TBD shield bounce like ready to go as like as your default play, right? So anyway, I feel like I, I'm just gonna end up talking in circles if you if you want just a flexible cap build and you you take a bit slower, you like the defensive aspect of the game, this build will work really, really well for you. If you're getting to a stage where it's like kill everything before they kill you, you honestly probably just shouldn't be playing Captain America if we're being completely honest with each other. Um, but you want to look to get counter mod on your best defense and then cut dig in. That's that's what you should strive towards if you're a cap stand and you're like, nah, I always want to run him. Best defense, roll for counter, cut dig in. Okay, Captain Marvel, um, <laughs> I hate this character, but I have found a, a deck that I quite enjoy um, with her when I do run her, and that of course is Knee Strike at two copies, Quick Jab, one step ahead, two copies of Bring It On, one Fist of Radiance, and Supernova. So the idea with this build is you get binary, right, via uh, Quick Jab and one step ahead, <laughs> things of that nature, you can try running two quick jab and, and that's fine. Um, my only issue with two quick jab is, like, so you can see the upgraded effect there is if she has binary knockback, that's fine. But I just don't like quick jabs low damage. Um, even in binary, even with knockback, it just doesn't really hit well enough to really make it feel good. Um, but you can definitely use it, right? It becomes a knockback quick. That's super useful, of course. So you'll see there on my list, knee strike flex. If you want to cut one knee strike, I would suggest, I would advise running a second quick jab in place of it. Um, that's totally fine. I just, I tried both. I didn't really like the double quick jab. I preferred the double knee strike and yeah. Uh, one step ahead just really helps um, the character's overall design, it helps you just get that ball rolling. Two copies of Bring It On, this card is the only reason why the character is playable in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> without Bring It On, she would just be dreadful. Uh, Fist of Radiance at one, super high damage because it, or in binary and outside of binary, but because it has knocked back, it's like insane amounts of damage. And then Supernova, this card I know some people don't really like. Um, originally I didn't either, but I've grown to like it because Similar to Blade Glaive, I realized, okay, if I want a Captain Marvel AoE option, I'm not using Photon Beam. That thing is just dreadful. So instead, I'll use Supernova, and it's a point-and-click AoE, meaning that you can use it to sort of get out of danger, similar to Bring It On. Um, so yeah, I've grown to like Supernova. Um, I would say, yeah, Knee Strikes, some people don't like it. They think the card doesn't really do much, and, and I totally see your point of view. I totally see what you're saying. But for me, um, the fact it does more damage than Quick Jab and the fact that it gives you block for damage dealt, that's kind of what I value because I've just personally found that the Bring It On resist stacks, while they are nice, sometimes they're not enough. Or if, like, if it's a super villain reinforcement, sometimes you want the Knee Strike or the block from Knee Strike. Yeah. I think you can play it any way you want. But yeah, one copy Knee Strike definitely afflicts. Supernova definitely a flex. I would say everything between, yeah, Java and Fist, though, these are pretty staple. But I've seen people bring uh, Reign of Blows. I've seen people defend that card. I don't know. Marvel is just needs work in general. I, I don't know. So I, I, this probably isn't the best Marvel build. This is just the best one that I have found for me. And yeah, so um, if you that said, if you do roll 
game block on KO or on KO game block rather on your reign of blows, it doesn't get rid of binary, so that's super tight. Um, but that's one mod on one card, and so like I said, I'm not really pushing for that. But if you do roll reign of blows with that mod, definitely run that card for sure. Uh, yeah, not much to say there. I don't think Marvel's that great of a character, so this is a deck that works well for me. <laughs> um, Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange has a ton of great cards, right? I'm not going to rehash this. We all know this by now, and if you don't, you're living under a rock. Um, but very, very simple build. Two copies of Winds, two Gaze, one Vapor, one Axe, one Vans, one Seven Suns. The logic behind this deck for me is two wins because you have to have one attack, and having two wins just fills the deck perfectly. Um, Agamotto's Gaze at two, you could probably cut this to one, but I have found two is great. The idea is if you can use one Agamotto's Gaze, get four card plays, and then use the second Agamotto's Gaze on that fourth card play turn, then you're generating another one, and then it just keeps on going and going and going. And it becomes super valuable because you're kind of getting the benefit of Blessing of the Vashanti from Agamotto's Gaze already, on top of all the other benefits. Um, Vapors of Veltor, th while this card is broken, it pro no, it is the most broken card in the game, and it's not even... I was about to contest it, but no, it's not even a contest. Um, I don't think you actually need more than one. To be honest, I really don't. Uh, I don't think you need concealing like every turn, uh, and I don't think I'd want to see it more than... At, or at more than one copy in the deck. However, if you do... If you feel like you want a second copy, yeah, yeah cut either Bands or Seven Suns. Um, one copy of Axe, this is just one of his highest damaging, if not, no, it is his highest damaging card, I guess, technically, uh, single target. And it applies Weak, which is just another form of utility. Uh, Crimson Bands, this is one that's a personal preference of mine. I know you could, you could definitely cut it, and I don't think you'd miss it. Um, however, the Bind and Vulnerable, this allows me to bring him on missions like Capture Agent or destroy device or nest mother and just basically win um, now the disclaimer is if you're bringing say hulk or spider-man or even a hunter and you're running more of those mind cards right the berserk cards and all that you probably don't need or want crimson bands of cedarek but um, i do like having it it is redrawn more than his other cards for sure but this just works for me um, if I was going to run anything else, I would run either a second Vapors or I would run a Shield of the Seraphim if the mission called for it, um, and that would be acceptable too. And then Seven Suns. I don't think you need to run this. If you want to just run Strange as a full support and just never mind the damage, you could definitely cut this for something else. Um, but I don't really think you need to play him that way, and so I like having, again, same with Glaive, same with Supernova. You're going to see the trend here. I, I really value these AoE... Um, Midnight Sun cards because a point and click AoEs are so useful uh, in terms of damage output, and so Seven Suns is no exception to that rule. Really, there's not much to say here other than of all the cards he has, I think these are just the best. Like Winds, Gaze, Vapors, Axe. Uh, these four cards are just insane. You could run a full deck of just two copies of all of those, and you'd be totally fine. I just enjoy the utility of Crimson Bands and the damage of Seven Suns. But this is Doctor Strange. You can kind of play him however you want. Ghost Rider. So this is the only character where I'm going to say, and I genuinely would like believe that this is the only deck. There is no other way to play the character in a way that's good, in a way that's like, you're not just fighting the system. Um, <clears throat> if you've played Ghost Rider and you're you're like, eh, I don't really get it. I don't really see it. I don't think it's that good. I don't. I don't really... Trust me, just try this build and just laugh. Like, just watch the sparks fly, literally. Um, so, two Lash, two Straight to Hell, one Hell Mouth, two Hell Ride, Penance Stare. The idea is very, very, very simple. So, you use Lash to set up your Hell Rides, and, you know, as a forceful knockback quick, the card is just insane. Disregard the damage he takes. Um, two copies of Straight to Hell. You can try cutting this to one, and I think that's totally your prerogative to do so and if you were to do that i would run a second hellmouth instead but two straight to hell feels better trust me um because it replaces him with a drop meaning it's effectively a conceal and it heals him so and you'll notice that it heals him for more than lash damage meaning that effectively you're you're gonna go higher than the damage you take right 
And so that synergizes well with his passive too, which raises his max health. So you can just keep topping yourself up and it generates the heroism, of course. Um, Hellmouth at one, this has nothing to do with the drop. This entirely has to do with the fact that it's a plus two heroism, gain one strength in card that also repositions you for Hellride. A really good Ghost Rider user will understand that using move to set up Hellride is a highly inefficient use of your move. And so it's better to use Hellmouth to do that or Lash when you can. And that aspect of the character I think is probably the only thing that keeps him fun for me as the deck is pretty straightforward. Um, but using his end position and stuff is, is super fun for me. Two Hellride, why two? Very simple, so that you always have it. Um, <laughs> you, you obviously you don't want to because in, at the same turn because you would discard them both. However, um, if you do draw the second one, just redraw it. Don't you know get rid of it, and then you're good to go. Hellride is the whole the whole reason why this deck exists. You lash to set up the Hellride. You Hellmouth to strengthen the Hellride. You straight to Hell to heal and 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 keep yourself alive for the hell ride and then penance stare is very very simply your finisher so whatever the biggest health pool on the screen is just penance stare that unit and win the game or in the case of nest mother you know use hex charge use thwip use bind like whatever on the on the guardian penance stare the nest mother boom dead win right it, like very straightforward build this is the only ghost rider build if you want him to be a good consistent strong character any other ghost rider build is just straight up trolling which is why there is no flex options immolate is garbage retribution is okay judgment is okay at best um hell's wrath i think it's called or, or hell's fury rather uh, that card sucks um yeah this is the ghost rider build period again the only thing is if you don't want to run two straight to hells i would say run a second hell mouth but that's that's just not going to feel great either <laughs> so yeah okay hulk uh, now going from a character who where i think there's only one build that's good i go to another character where i can't even find a one build that feels good having all eight cards so hulk is a very very straightforward character uh, once you understand how his passive works and how rage works very simple two copies of smash two challenging roar always angry rampage seismic slam world breaker now before you start yelling at me but zed you put always angry in your worst cards list yeah i did that's the problem though is i i i struggle to find an eighth card on hulk that is it feels good it doesn't feel clunky it it works it's not just redrawn every turn like I've yet to find that eighth card. The only exception was there was one run where I had Thunderclap and the mod I got for it was on redraw gain one heroism. So yeah, like if you can take like if I can get an eighth card with on redraw gain heroism, that's that's the one I want. Um but so two copies of Smash, this one should be a given. If you're not running two, you really should be running two. Why? Not only is it a point and click stun, but it is one of the only cards that gives him rage or, or I sorry I should say one of the only offensive cards that gives him rage the other one being world breaker um two copies of challenging roar this is not used to taunt like a whole screen the whole point of this card is to uh, generate rage and gain counter the taunt is pretty irrelevant um oh and heroism obviously but rage and counter this is kind of why you want challenging roar because counter attacking with counter or sorry getting hit generates rage and then when you counter it attacks for the raged version so you it's a good way to sort of take some damage build your rage go to town the following turn so the idea would be like smash a threat roar somebody generate your rage with the counter and then the following turn you either use rampage seismic slam or world breaker like that's pretty much how the character plays himself so always angry the reason why I've chosen this as my eighth card is because is, is very very simple. I don't want any of his other attack cards. I think they're all awful, um, and I don't want a fourth hero uh, heroic card because it's too clunky. And so you're left with always angry <laughs> um, because challenging roar is already at two copies, and that is that is the only logic. Like that is it is that simple. That if I could run Hulk at seven cards, I would. And so you'll notice always angry also 
not only is it a, is a non-heroic non-attack, but it also has exhaust. So for me, 90% of the time, always angry. If I can use it earlier, or if I can use it uh, before World Breaker, or if I can use it before Smash, I will. It gets it out of the deck having exhaust and increases my rage by one, which is nice, but not necessary. Seldom will I ever use Always Angry for the heal, at least further into the game. Early on, yeah, for sure, it's nice to have, but uh, it gets to a point where I'm just using it to get it out of the deck and get the benefit of the increased rage, honestly. Um, so the flex cards would be these three, Always Angry, Rampage, and Seismic Slam. I think you could take any combination of heroics that you like on Hulk. His, you know, his heroics are decent, like they're okay. Uh, Mighty Blow is nice if you like knockbacks, which I do, but I just don't like that it's single target. And um, Thunderclap I don't like because it doesn't have a base damage coefficient that's meaningful. Um, too Smash, too Challenging, Roar and World Breaker. These cards are all the staples. Definitely run these five. And um, yeah, go from there. Not much to say. I think he feels good. It's just having finding that eighth card is is truly a challenge, at least for me. Um, let me know if you have an eighth card that you like and you run this deck or something similar. So, yeah. Iron Man. So Iron Man, kind of like uh, kind of like Hulk. You kind of take him a few different ways, but this is just the one that I've found the most consistency with. Disclaimer, this build is meant for someone who is just using Iron Man as a character. Someone who, <clears throat> you know, isn't solely revolving their composition around the character. You just want to take him because you like him and you want to have him be useful, but not the only way to play, or the only, sorry, the only carry on your team. Blah, 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 blah. I'm adding that disclaimer because I don't like precision. I don't think you need it. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you'll notice there's no Hellfire Beam. There's only one Surgical Strike, not two. I'm not running new planner heads up. Like This is just a very solid, core, reliable Iron Man deck that does a ton of damage while bringing utility. So two copies of Quick Blast. This card is great. Not only is it a knockback quick, but it also draws a hero card and that is a lot more useful than generic draw power, especially for Iron Man with Surgical Strike. Um, one copy of Blast, this is just a forceful knockback with a ton of damage. So very, very high damage option that isn't Surgical Strike. Again, uh, leave it to me. This card is pretty integral to the character. He kind of needs it. I wouldn't run two copies. I wouldn't run zero copies. One feels perfect. Two marked targets. You could probably cut this to one, hence why it's on the flex list. Um, but I like having two personally. Uh, if I was to cut one though, I'd probably run Precision and then take the build more in that Precision Hellfire Beam direction, uh, but I prefer this direction. And then one Surgical Strike because two is clunky, and one Air Superiority because two is clunky. Air Superiority, if you're not a big fan of the card, I understand why, but recognize that this is one of those cards where the mod really does amplify the card's value tenfold. And what I mean by that is you get apply weak, apply vuln, apply bleed, apply this, apply that. 50, even if it's 50% chance, um, take it, run it. Because air superiority attacks every unit on the board no matter what. So I shouldn't say no matter what, but almost all the time. So that mod, that weaken, that bleed, that vuln, whatever, it's being applied to everybody. So not only is air superiority a pretty half decent damaging skill, um, but it is a massive massive debuff generator and so for that reason it's very high value and then of course if you use mark target and you have mark like a minion air superiority is refunded boom and then you just keep going 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 i love this deck this version of the deck i it's super easy to build too right like i have one or sorry two epics at one copy each and the rest is all commons like iron man's base deck is very strong and i don't think you really need to run as rares again if you really want to use precision you could new plan is awful heads up modded heads up can be good i know i've saw, seen someone do like give to resist i've seen like gain conceal stuff like that like if you run the conceal or the resist mods yeah sure heads up can be good obviously um but other than that heads up and new plan just aren't great um so the second mark target is a flex. The, uh, the second blast, pardon me, sorry. Blast is also the second flex. Um, if you don't really care for the forceful knockback, I understand, but at the same time, I think it's super useful. It adds that utility. 
uh, to the character that he may not otherwise have. So it's nice to have, at least that's why I run it. And that's my Iron Man deck. Uh, magic, so kind of very, very, very similar to Ghost Rider. I think this pretty much is the only deck for the character with one or two exceptions. So two quick soul slashes, two kicks, a Limbo Portal, a Limbo's Grasp, a Banish, and a Dark Child. So let's get the obvious out of the way. Um, Dark Child is a fantastic Legendary Suns card. It is nice to have, but you don't always need it. So sometimes it can feel a little clunky. Um, but th that said, even though it's a bit of a niche card, a tech card, if you will, I suggest you run it. Um, if you're concerned about the clunkiness of Dark Child, just play it earlier than later, because at the very least, you're thinning out your deck, right? It has exhaust, and then you also have counter with it as well, so if you upgrade it, that's super nice too. Um, one copy of Banish, two feels awful, and running zero is a disservice to the character. Um, Banish is fantastic, not for the drop, but simply because it's a point-and-click FU button. So if you're not familiar with this, it basically works like a point-and-click conceal on an ally, or if you use it on an enemy, it completely eats their turn. And even super villains, uh, if they are anyone except Sabretooth, it eats both their actions, which is very useful in certain situations. And if it is Sabretooth, then his frenzy timer does not go down while he's banished, so that can be useful to sort of gain your bearings, um, especially because Sabretooth as a reinforcement can be quite uh, frustrating because he sort of messes with the flow of, of what you're doing. So that's really nice. And Limbo's Grasp is, without Limbo's Grasp, Magic is a pretty dumpster fire character. Um, you need Limbo's Grasp at one copy for sure. Now, caveat, Limbo's Portal. If you get a second copy of Limbo's Grasp with free, 100% dump Limbo's Portal. Get it out of here. Because why would you run Limbo's Portal when it's free and it summons a portal when Limbo's Grasp is free and it does what Limbo's Grasp does and it summons a portal, right? So if you do get Limbo's Grasp free, just run that instead of Limbo Portal. I have never been so lucky, uh, but yeah. So this could be a second Limbo's Grasp if you have free. Now let's talk about the attack cards because the attack cards are... Like, she only has, uh, what, two heroics? Yeah, like, she doesn't have much in the way of skill and heroic cards, so not much is debated at this part. But what is debated by some people living under a rock is her attack card. So let's talk about that for just a second. One quick soul slash is flex, and the reason why is I wouldn't flex it into another attack card, but I would flex it into maybe a gather if you like gather, or a third portal if you really feel like you need it. But I promise that... Once you get her passive to level 2, relay level 2, running that third portal skill just starts to feel a little unnecessary and a little clunky. Because you don't want to have more attacks than you do limbos or portals because then you're going to start being off cadence and it's going to feel bad and it's just not a fun time. So uh, two portal cards feels great. Now, yeah, pretty much quick soul slash I would flex into gather and only gather, but uh, I didn't want to put that because... It might be unfair. So, Soul Blast is Soul Blast is great if you can get it modded to do increased damage because then it starts to get the base damage coefficient and the way Forceful Knockback works um, with your offensive rating. Long story short, when there's no damage coefficient on your Forceful Knockback, it sucks. As soon as there's a damage coefficient on it, it starts to be very good. So. If you roll Soul Blast with a increased damage to give it a damage number, sure. You can definitely cut Quick Soul Slash down to one, and that would be fine. Trap Door is awful because it does not interact with Relay. It does not interact with Limbo's Grasp. And frankly, if you need Trap Door to set up plays, you're prob like there was probably a better and more efficient way to make that play in the first place. Um, which is unfortunate because I think Trap Door is a cool design. I think it's cool on paper, but it just doesn't... You never need it, and it does the exact same damage as Kick. If Trapdoor did like 50% more offensive rating than it does, maybe you could consider it because then it would be a really chunky damage card um, that doesn't need Limbo's Grasp. But with one play of Limbo's Grasp already, your Kick is doing twice the damage of Trapdoor. Your Quick Soul Slash is doing as much damage as Trapdoor, right? Do you, do you see the problem? It's like because Trapdoor doesn't interact with Grasp, and Grasp is so necessary for the character. You would be running a card that 
ends up becoming the weakest card in your deck after as soon as you play Limbo's Grasp one time. So that's why Trapdoor sucks. Um, and Soul Blast, like I said, if you get extra damage, sure, try it. But the reality is Kick is so good, I'd run four copies if I could, but you can only run two. And then Quick Soul Slash, as soon as you play Limbo's Grasp once, Quick Soul Slash becomes arguably the best Quick card in the game, if not the best Quick card in the game. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's my Magic deck. This is basically as complete as it gets, almost to the degree of Ghost Rider, except for the fact that you can run a second second Grasp with Free, which is just a straight improvement over Portal. So there you go. Um, next up, Nico. So Nico is another character that took me a little bit of time to find a deck that I was happy with, but I did get to one. I, I quite enjoyed this deck, actually, um, and it's very easy to make. So two copies of Curse, two Blood Magic, one Restore, one Empower, one Witch Storm, and one Crack the Sky. Now, I would say that uh, the second copy of Curse... The Restore and the Witch Storm are all flex. Why? Because some people don't like the second copy of Curse. I totally respect that. And they they want to run like no attack cards on Nico. I also respect that. Um, and instead they maybe want to run a Swarm. Totally fine. Totally fine. You can do that. Um, restore is the flex. The reason why this is a flex option is you, kind of like I was saying with Hunter Heal, you make it to a point where you don't want the heal on Nico. However, the reason why I do like it is is not even for its benefit, right? It says, if target has less than 50%, do not discard. I actually often prefer to use it when the target is above 50%, because then that way it does get exhausted and I don't see it again. So this is one of those situations where you can mod it to get something really cracked out and insane, or you can leave it unupgraded to have that point and click exhaust. I'll leave it up to you. And this is actually like a bad thing, but we're kind of just fighting the, the card's design at that point. Now, Empower at 1 feels great because, well, 2 is way, 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 way too clunky. And 1 is nice because it allows you to get those big heroism plays with whoever you're built beside. That's the catch, though. Nico by herself is a pretty subpar character, but she really enhances people to do what they do just better, right? Blood Magic and Empower showcase this more than anything else. Um... Witchstorm, this is a card that no one really talks about, and I think it's really, really good. Um, Swarm is in Witchstorm's spot until I pull Witchstorm, then Swarm gets cut, because Witchstorm usually does more damage than Swarm, and it's not RNG. Rather, you can make it not RNG, excuse me. Um, and if you mod it, you can start rolling and using it in a similar way to air superiority, right? Apply weaken, apply bleed, blah, 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 blah. So Witchstorm is super awesome. Uh, with and without mods, it does replace Swarm, but unupgraded Witch Storm is awful, so that could maybe be why people have always shied away from it. Um, I'm not sure, but it's a great card. If you've never tried it, I, I encourage you to, but it's a flex option for sure. Um, so restore that and curse. Now, two copies of Blood Magic. I think running this at one is just silly. Uh, honestly, it's probably one for one, like pound for pound, the strongest card in her deck, and... The reason for that is applying two strengthened or two counter and drawing one of that hero's cards is insane. It's insane. This is like the carry enabler right here. Um, fast is useless and blood magic while niche can be useful and it's also why cutting restore is totally acceptable uh, for sure. And yeah, so then crack the sky, great card. You know, I feel like this doesn't really need to be explained. Now there's one thing with this deck that people might already be raging in the comments about. And that is the lack of double up. I think double up is a horrible card. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, so double up, base copy has exhaust, upgraded it does not. It should keep the exhaust and it would be a far better card. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is you're rolling between attack skills and heroics. Now let's say um, you're running one copy because you would never ever run two of double up. You'd be trolling. Um, and you draw it and you're like, oh, it's attacks. I don't want to duplicate attacks this turn. Redraw. You see it again in two turns. Oh, I drew attacks again. Uh, I don't want to do attacks. Redraw. Oh, and you just finish the mission, right? So double up is redrawn so many times that it doesn't do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. And if the stars do align and you do get 
you know, let's say you want to do heroics. You're like, okay, great. I got double up for heroics. And you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. But then you don't actually pull the heroic that you want to duplicate because then in order to duplicate heroics, you'd have to use empower. Why? Because you want to make the heroics cost zero. So you'd have to like double up on your heroics, finish that turn, draw in power, play in power, play your heroic. Like it, it's just way too much work for nothing. And double up also just clunks up the hand. It makes it bricky. So but like double up is so bad. It it's so bad. If you if you have a strategy revolving around Nico and double up, I would be curious to know the consistency. Like I would be curious to know the math behind that and like how often it's working for you because there's no shot that that's a reliable strategy. Um, <laughs> and so because of that double up, I hate that card. Uh, if it kept exhaust on upgrade, maybe we could have a conversation because then you could mod it out to do something nice. But uh, yeah, this Nico deck, I love this Nico deck. I do sometimes run one curse, admittedly, um, in place of whatever, uh, whatever I get. Restore, I like it, but I can see why you maybe don't. Witch Storm, I like it. I can see why maybe you don't like it, but I encourage you to try it. Yeah, that's my Nico deck. Uh, next up, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, this one might be a bit odd looking. Uh, a lot of it people would agree on, but then some of it people may disagree on. So let me do my best to explain. Um, this is this out of all the decks on the roster is the one that takes the least amount of commons and requires the most amount of effort to really get going. Why? Because Scarlet Witch's commons are dreadful, uh, except for Hex Charge. So we have two copies of Quick Toss. Two hex marks, one chaos field, one chaos reigns, and two hex charges. So, you know, six of our deck slots are only three cards. Pretty easy to make in that respect. But the reigns in the field both need to be upgraded or they're dreadful. Um, quick toss is one of the best cards in the game. It It is the best quick in the game, you know, with like unconditionally, it just is. Because knockback in any direction and quick and a base damage coefficient. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Lash might arguably be better, but Lash has a downside. Um, so just pound for pound, Quick Toss is up there with Lash. You could say one or the other. Um, Hexmark. Honestly, applying three marks to an, each enemy in an area is a little overkill. It's almost unnecessary. I would rather it just be one marked and do something else, but it is what it is. Um... Chaos Field and Chaos Reigns. These cards are very awkward. They're a little tricky to use, but you'll notice that the way Scarlet Witch is designed, having the Chaos Field as your third skill and having Chaos Reigns as your third heroism or sorry heroic card can be super useful. And depending on on the enemy types that you're against, Chaos Reigns is better or worse, and so you would just redraw it or use it appropriately. Um, Chaos Field, you can set this up relatively easily. Um, just with how, like, you, you'll notice that Hex Mark and Quick Toss, or sorry, Hex Mark and Hex Charge, she doesn't move that much, if at all. Um, so you can kind of manipulate, you don't want to manipulate Wanda's movement, you want to manipulate the ally's movement in order to make Chaos Field good. Um, but definitely clutch when it, when it works out. Now, Hex Charge at two copies. This may seem clunky, but the reality is, I don't want any of her other attack cards. I don't want any of her other skill cards. I don't want Chaos Field at two copies. I don't want Chaos Reigns at two copies. So you're kind of just left with Hex Charge because I think Hex Charge is a fantastic card. And so I, I try to play it quite often uh, when I do bring Scarlet Witch. I'm like, okay, this is a Hex Mark, Hex Charge kind of game. And that's just what I do. That's just how I play the character. Um, now, if you do want to cut Hex Charge, what I would do is run either No More or Detonate. No more if you want that big finisher. I don't really like it though. Um, and no more, or sorry, uh, detonate is useful. Not honestly, it's useful for the simple fact that on redraw gain heroism. So it's like your redraw fodder. So if you're like, you know, Zed, I don't really buy into that double hex charge nonsense, or you hate chaos reigns, sure. Uh, just cut one of those, bring in detonate, and just redraw detonate constantly, and you're getting free heroism, right? Like. It is what it is. Um, yeah, not much to say here. This is just my preferred way of playing the character. I think a lot of people, though, would say that two quick toss, two hex mark, and one hex charge. These are super, super staple. Um, yeah. And I think Chaos Reigns is really good, depending on 
what units you're against and that's the catch it depends on what mobs you're against but it's so good uh, because it's like Mindbreaker, but better. It's yeah, it's very very good. So that's my witch build. Not honestly, not too much to say. This is one of the only ways that she feels good. But is if you don't have two quick toss and two hex mark, yeah, she feels pretty bad. Spider Man. We're almost at the end. So Spider Man uh, is another character who kind of like Scarlet Witch. I I don't know, or sorry, I should say, kind of like Marvel, I don't really like a lot of the ways you can build him, I don't like a lot of what he does, um, but there are a few things that he can do that I, I do enjoy. So, I have one Chain Strike, two Quick Kicks, one Special Delivery, one Spider Sense, one Up Here, one Thwip, one Infernal Spider. So you'll notice already there's no Opportunist and there's no Web Slinger in the deck. Uh, there is a reason for both of those. Number one, Web Slinger. Um, Strengthen just doesn't really benefit him that much. Why? Uh, because, well, if we look at this, Quick Kick, it would benefit a bit, but it doesn't have a base damage coefficient. Um, special Delivery, same thing, doesn't have a base damage coefficient. Spider Sense is a skill. Whip does no damage. Infernal Spider does no damage. So the only cards that you'd really notice the impact of Strengthened would be up here, definitely. Like, Web Slinger with up here feels great. Um, and Chain Strike kind of when you use it. But that's the thing is like Chain Strike is not the kind of card that you're playing every single turn. It's one of the cards with his that you'd be redrawing more often than not. But it's nice to have when you do have it. Um, so if you're only using Web Slinger with up here, that's quite a clunky way or quite a clunky reason to run one card. Now, if you wanted to change the deck and run, say, like you wanted to cut Chain Strike run two up here and then cut something else and run web slinger sure like if you were just an up here bot if you will uh sure but i think that's a little bit weird and clunky i don't really like it i've tried it i don't like it um so yeah one chain strike this is here because of minion cleanup or like totem control on nest mother missions not much to say there i hate this card so much i i, I hate chain strike so much but at least the turns where it's useful, it can be useful. Um, two quick kicks. Th th this is partially why I hate Chain Strike and why I do sometimes cut it, um, depending on what what I get from mods, at least. Uh, quick kick. If the target was damaged this turn, yada yada. So quick kick is a much better finisher than it is a quick card, and you'll notice that trend with Spider-Man. He's way better at finishing off units than doing damage to them. Uh, again, up here being the exception to the rule. Uh, special delivery. I really like the force from knockback towards him. Um, this is just a unique perspective on the map. It's a good way to control the game, and yeah, force from knockbacks are always good. One spider sense. Really, do I need to really say anything about that? Um, one thwip. Do I really need to say much about that? I think two is far too clunky. Uh, zero kind of. I don't know what else I'd run if I was to cut thwip and one infernal spider. That's a given as well. Um, up here again if you want to try two copies of up here i think go for it um i just found it was clunky i found better ways to use the heroism um but up here is definitely his best card uh, at least in this deck and in general i would say so the two flex cards i have are chain strike and quick kick if you if i was to replace these i would probably run a second up here which would make him four heroism. And so therefore I would run a second spider sense or web slinger. So if you want to go that route, right? All the appears, all the heroic cards, fine. But but you definitely want to get rid of the quick kick or chain strike to do so. But I don't like it. This is, yeah, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, and why not opportunist? Right, opportunist, I've talked about this a bit in other content, but TLDR is opportunist outside of the very first turn just feels dreadful. It always feels bad. Um, the fact that environmental attacks cap out on damage is just so eventually they're going to be a lot less useful. Um, opportunist does continue to scale though because uh, because of how just Spider-Man continues to scale, so therefore opportunist continues to scale. So. But I don't like it because, yeah, buffing environmentals and giving some moves, sure. Um, but if you've already used the environmentals without using opportunist, it's like, oh, great. It just feels bad. 
right? So I don't run that card for that reason alone. Uh, when it works, it works, but when it doesn't, it's just redraw fodder, so I don't like it. And then Web Slinger, like, I... You could run Web Slinger, but it's very weird. If you put Strengthen on any other character, pretty much, it feels incredible. And then there's Spider-Man, where you give him Strengthen, and you're like... What? <laughs> uh, it's very odd, and so yeah. This is what I run. I think you could definitely cut the Chain Strike and Quick Kick, as I was just explaining, but... Overall, these six, the kick delivery, and then the whole bottom row, these are staple. These never change for me at all. And last up, we have Wolverine. So, same thing. This deck doesn't really change much for me, um, but there is one exception, and that is the Power Slash. So, the deck is two Chain Swipes, one Lethal Pounce, one Power Slash, one Berserk, Stink of Fear, Eviscerate, and Midnight Special. Now, Chain Swipes, I hate this card. I hate the fact that he... It almost feels like he needs it, um, but it does such pitiful damage. The full combo being apply weaken is dreadful. Uh, not the apply weaken part, but the fact it's full combo. Um, yeah, I really wish the upgrade. If this did just a hair more damage, I'd be happy. But then it may invalidate eviscerate, so I guess there is that to consider. Um, that's just a design flaw, though. Chain swipes being so important to the characters, and yet being such a crappy card is is a weird dynamic and i hate it but uh lethal pounce is a great card and it sets you up for midnight special or eviscerates lethal pounce into either of these cards is just incredible tons of damage very nice it really brings the character together uh, without lethal pounce it feels like he can't tank or do damage but with lethal pounce it feels like he can maybe do some damage um power slash so this is the first of two flex cards this is entirely your up to you uh, you could run Quick Swipe if you like the high damage of it. You could run a second Lethal Pounce if you like the Strength and Accessibility. The reason I run a Quick, uh, sorry, a Power Slash is I am a massive, massive fan of applying vulnerability, and I'm also a massive fan of Forceful Knockbacks. This does both. Um, and so he has no Knockbacks otherwise, he has no vulnerability application otherwise, and with Power Slash he becomes like a buff debuff bot. You have Apply Weaken, Apply Weaken, and Apply Vulnerability. I just really enjoy one copy of Power Slash. Not much to say there. Um, but totally, like, I'll make sure you run four attack cards on Wolverine for sure. And if you're going to cut Power Slash for anything, I would probably recommend a second Lethal Pounce. But if you do want a quick on him, Quick Swipe is totally fine. Um, Berserk. Now, I have the reason why Berserk is flex is I've dabbled with the idea of not running Berserk and just running a second copy of Stink of Fear. I've tried running Rapid Healing instead of Berserk as like a, po a uh, point and click healing option rather than Berserk enabling other cards to heal and while i do like this idea what i have found with berserk over rapid healing and in, in that with that logic in mind is i don't like sometimes it's nice to fill the hand with berserk and then redraw the wolverine cards that you just drew and sometimes that's better because then if you do pull like lethal pounce midnight special or lethal pounce eviscerate you're like oh sick i can just pop off with Wolverine this turn. But if you draw something like, say, I don't know, Stink of Fear and Chain Swipes, it's like, eh, okay, maybe not. Uh, so then you play the Stink of Fear to apply the weak, and then you redraw the Chain Swipes to get that extra healing, or like whatever, right? Like uh, Whatever. I just found that Berserk gives you the opportunity to heal or go on the offense and heal, whereas Rapid Healing only heals. So... Try it though. Like I, I encourage you to maybe try it. Try cutting Berserk if you've never tried, or if you haven't tried cutting Berserk. Try it. See what you think. Um, I do think it's a valid option. I think maybe some people just haven't even considered it because they feel like he needs it. And I was sort of in that camp too. And then the issue with running a second Stink of Fear is it just became a bit clunky. I didn't want to taunt and counter and weaken like that often. So I just found that Stink of Fear was at one felt perfect. Um, and then Eviscerate at 1, 2 is clunky, and then Midnight Special because it's a pretty solid card. So um, this is my Wolverine deck. I will admit, though, that Power Slash definitely gets flexed around uh, depending on what I pull, depending on what mods I get. Uh, but the rest is staple. I don't change the rest. Um, yeah.
But if you play them another way, that's totally fine. I would suggest though four attacks, definitely, definitely, definitely four attacks <laughs> uh, is good. So there you have it. Those are my decks. Um, this will be linked in the description below. If you want to have it as a reference, it'll also be on my anthology as well. Um, let me know what you run. You know, I'm not here to tell you this is the only way to play the character again, other than Ghost Rider and kind of magic. Um, this is just what I do. People ask me. Here it is as a reference. And I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out for now.